Hi, welcome to my podcast, Stories by Vera V. Today, I'm joined by a very special guest by the name of... Ion Ava. Hi. And we'll be discussing what's it like being a singer-songwriter. Interesting stories by interesting people. Stories by Vera V. So to start off, would you like to introduce yourself? Yes. Okay. Um, I'm Ion Ava, and I'm a musician slash artist. I do many different things, um, and I'm interested in almost everything that... Um, involves art when it comes to perfecting the things I have in my head and like to put them out into a project yeah mm-hmm. that's a very nice way to put it <laughs> <laughs> yeah. like <Thank> that <laughs> and so today I know we already talked about this but today was your mm-hmm. release day right yeah that was my release day of um a new EP of a song we already released, but we did a remix EP with um, two other DJs slash producers. And we released the music video to this song as well, which is kind of big because we worked on this for over a year. Yeah, we filmed it last year. And like we had some, um, like a pause in between because we had to work on the, um, the remixes. But like the video itself, it took like a half a year constantly. We worked on this. Like me wow. and a friend, we, we met up every week to do the props, <laughs> like the crown and the, the staff and everything. Like we went crazy for this one because we wanted to, yeah, to, we wanted to envision this. And along the way, we came up with new ideas and were, were like, oh, we have to do this. No, why did you have that idea? Now we have to do it. <laughs> And it was, it was it was a great journey, but it was also very um, a lot of work. But mm. I think it paid off. And we just like we met over a Zoom session today, so we could um, have our own little release party. Oh, celebration! We couldn't have it. <laughs> yeah, our own little celebration because like we wanted to celebrate all the work we put in. Like because normally I I think I never had a release party ever not once it's kind of just no it never well it was we released everything during corona so it was always was hard and then sometimes it took longer for the video to um to edit and everything so we kind of didn't have time to do a premiere because it wasn't ready yet and it's so hard sometimes to um to find uh to schedule um, a release part you know because you yeah, want everyone yeah. there and yeah it kind of just didn't happen for this one I just wanted for me at least to I didn't care if um not everyone was able to come to this little zoom session but I wanted to mm. um like to kind of yeah to let it go by by uh-huh. by setting this statement kind of like saying now we did that and it's out now so Mm -hmm. I'm going to be able to move on to the next project or to just pause for a minute (laughs) Uh no that's great I like that because it really signifies that you know you're done with it now you can move on to the next things I think that's really important because because at least I tend to get stuck in the old projects where I'm always like wanting to perfect them even more or like oh we have to promote this and and for this album as well like this is kind of the final thing we put out because mm. it took us almost we almost for the the album that this song is from that we released this remix ep and we worked on these songs for like five years and not constantly you know uh, but it, yeah over like time we we started when we were like 16 and he was 15 oh or something like that and <laughs> the songs just added up and then it got to this point where we were like okay it's more than an ep it's more than a single i mean it's an album and we want to put it out and then we worked on the music videos and like Mm. we delayed it so many times because we had different projects and we knew it didn't hurry or something like that so yeah kind of yeah it's almost even six years when we started to write one song I mean there are so many different versions but sometimes Mm. the vocals I did for a song are like two years older than the newest vocals I did for another song (laughs) so it's a big difference difference is very big it's very big and so 
<laughs> it was so hard uh, as soon as he start to um i mean I, I mean it's good to perfect the things you did wrong when you were mm-hmm. um younger but I mean, after a year, even you don't like it anymore because you're better and you want to do it. Yeah, so it's really exactly. important to release stuff and to like to put an end to it and yeah, put it out there and then move on to the next project. Um, because it's yeah, you you lose so much time if you always redo it and redo it, and that's mm-hmm. kind of what we did with some songs. But I think at, in the end, it was the right time to release it and. No, it was kind of the, yeah, maybe the beginning to, of a new era or something. Mm-hmm. I don't know. And are those the songs <laughs> okay. from your debut album? Yeah. The more one? These are the songs. Yeah, the more one. I listened to it more. today. Really? Oh, that's yeah. So cool. uh-huh. I liked Sorry. it a lot. What inspired it? Because when I was listening, there's so many different, I guess, aspects to mm-hmm. it. And it just sounds very different. Like it's all mm-hmm. one album, but it's just so unique. <laughs> yeah there's so many different songs I'm, I mean maybe uh, some things that you just heard explained um, a part of this question mm-hmm, because yeah. um, I mean it's such a big difference a time difference or a time gap between many songs I mean Back to the Roots was probably the first song we started to write and I have mm-hmm. like vers- versions with you can e- you can even hear it in my voice because I had my puberty um uh, there's a word in German, but I don't think there's a word in English puberty? for puberty. This, yeah, mm-hmm. yes, puberty, but like just specifically for the male voice. What okay, happens. I get that. I get we that. call it in German. We call it Stimmbruch, like the voice uh-huh. breaks. You know, mm-hmm. like the voice turns into yeah. how it gets deeper. And when I started singing, that, I have versions where my voice is higher, just because I was younger, and you can really <laughs> hear it. And so fun <laughs> because, yeah. And this was like the first song we wrote for it. And then I don't know the exact order. And yeah, sometimes we mm. like paused on one and then we started. Yeah. And so we kind of, we really tried to bring them together in the end. Like um, mostly Ben did the work to do that in the production and we changed them up sometimes um, mm. quite quite a bit and some I wanted to be duets and then it didn't happen because Mm -hmm. like yeah it just didn't happen so oh I think I lost track of the question (laughs) I was asking Um, what inspired it sounds specific yeah what inspired it yeah so I think it was just this album was just a product of um us um liking to work together because okay. we know each other for almost over 10 years um wow so <laughs> and when when we like we have photos where we are like both maybe six or five years old <laughs> and our parents knew each other and so and he went to america he was in america for two years like first and second grade so he almost has um, a native tongue when it comes to English because he yeah. learned to write in English first. So um, he is able to correct all the English words where sometimes when it comes to, yeah, mm-hmm. well, that's another time for another question. But <laughs> <laughs> um, what I wanted to say is it was just a product of us making songs and then putting them together. And I think in- inspiration is everywhere for me. Like I'm inspired just when I get a kick of adrenaline when I think something is amazing or, and then I want to or may, maybe just late in the night like I said I'm a night owl then yeah. my head <laughs> kind of explodes with ideas and I'm like I want to do this and I want to do that and then I have crazy ideas and then I have to do it because as soon as you start to do it and you start to involve people then you have to do it and I think that's yeah. the thing that inspired many things and I'm also inspired by working with other artists and yeah I think it, it, there wasn't one thing that inspired it I think there were many things that inspired it but it was just like a byproduct of us making music and then putting all of it together that's why it's so broad with what it's talking about and what's the sound of the different yeah mm-hmm. like it's just a collection of songs in these five years and in regards to making music together, do you guys split it a certain way? Like you do the melody and then he writes the lyrics or how is that organized? 
that's um from song to song that's very different mm -hmm. um sometimes i send him a demo of what i did and it's almost complete like with the arrangements and then he like produces them or sometimes like he sends me what he did like he played with something with, with the production of something new and then i kind of write something over it or he sends me the verse and i do the chorus or he sends me a full song or like i said i send him a full song mm -hmm. but okay like to if you want to um just separate um separate it further i guess like he's the producer and like i'm the singer and the artist like when it comes to videos the music videos and artwork and everything then i'm the boss then i do it like i mm -hmm. edit the videos i i like i come up with the ideas i yeah and when it comes to music we're very split and we work together but he like he works on the music and he produces it and he is an amazing pianist so he does mm -hmm. that and he's i think he's an amazing writer i think he's the better writer <laughs> than i am because <laughs> I don't know. He tells the uh, stories um, so genuinely. I love it. Like he wrote the the lyrics of King Without a Kingdom. Mm -hmm. Maybe I, I don't know if you remember, but I, I listened to it. Yeah. Wrote the lyrics of Immortal. Maybe you. They're like poems. Yeah. So beautiful. Yeah, I think so too. And I and I love and I love it. Like uh, when it comes to lyrics, I struggle a bit more. I guess. Mm -hmm. Maybe it just doesn't tell me that he struggles, but <laughs> maybe it's, it's it's not my mother tongue, I guess. Mm -hmm. Um, and I think my head explodes with many ideas, so it's sometimes very hard to um put them into words that mm -hmm. people besides me understand. You know, <laughs> besides so, you, <laughs> yeah, because it would be so like then then I get off track like in this interview sometimes maybe you'll notice that I'm uh, <laughs> very much going off track with the question and I'm and putting oh it's great it's that. a discussion yeah. it's a discussion yeah <laughs> <laughs> so but but that's kind of me and he's more structured we very maybe um to add to this question that uh, is interesting maybe you'll understand um a little further how we work because like we are very opposite people when it comes to like how we like to work like he's a morning person I'm really? very much <laughs> not a morning person and like he is very much like he is the one he studies um oh I don't know what it's called in English like oh I really don't know uh, informatic it's called in German uh -huh. so what is this that? should I should be able to translate that that's like where I work programming with programming okay the computer computer yeah. science yeah mm -hmm. yeah computers is coding computer science yeah it could be yeah yeah computer science and we're just gonna call it that mm -hmm. <laughs> maybe i'm wrong but it doesn't matter um, and he's learning that um and he was always very also focused on school where i was like i hate school i want to do art and everything he was like no school is my priority i love art but school is my priority and um he does everything when it comes to money, like, because like writing this down and he's very structured and uh -huh. he works like nine to five and then he has to go to bed because he's tired. And, and I'm like, if I want something done, I'm not going to sleep. And <laughs> I'm very like, very much impulsive. And so we're very different when it comes to that. And so we kind of match perfectly. So mm -hmm. we're, what we do, we really learn from each other. So it's not just I do this and he does that. But yeah, we have like our our parts when it comes to like writing and producing all the stuff we do. So I think that's very I important. Think. Your partnership sounds very balanced because like you said, you guys are yeah, opposites, but is. you complement each other so nicely. Yeah. That's what matters. Like we, yeah. Like we, we have things that we have in common very much, but I mean, that's this passion for music and everything, but we're so different in so many things. Like he also, um, like uh, maybe, you know, just, you ask, ask yourself, um, it's kind of all about me and my name is very big. Um, 
on there. <laughs> oh my god, I'm so stupid. I just realized that. Um, yeah, Timo Glue, whatever. That's my real name. So <laughs> it's fine. <laughs> my oldest <laughs> name is Yona. <laughs> Doesn't matter. <laughs> um, so, oh, I just forgot what I wanted to say. What, what was I talking about? Um, name. <laughs> Ah, yeah, my name is everywhere because like he wished to be more in the background mm. and like he decided to go to go go and study and don't pursue music as a career. And okay. I decided that I want to do this and we talk about this all the time and we we like to communicate about everything when it comes to this because it's so important if you have a partnership when it comes to music and as soon as I mean, we don't really um, earn much, but you never know. You could explode, and then if you never discuss certain things, yeah, it could end badly. Yeah, absolutely. And and so we talk through everything that comes to our mind when it's unclear. And like he wanted that my name was bigger. Okay. On and that I'm like the head of this, and he just. Um, wants to be like the producer, the pianist, and yeah. So, so um, that's the dynamic where he's able to choose um, what he like, how much energy he wants and he can put in because it's not his mm -hmm. priority, you know. Like, it's very important to him and he um, works a lot for it, but it's not the main, main, main priority. And I would mm -hmm. quit every job when it comes to this. <laughs> like, I would. I don't care. This is my plan A and I don't want to do anything else. Uh -huh. um, I mean, of course, I do different things. But yeah. when it comes to um, the, these projects and to the music and to the art, and it's my priority and it's not his. And that kind of, there was a time when he, when he um, thought like he was like hurling me. Maybe mm -hmm. he was um, pulling me back yeah kind of yeah um mm -hmm. but and then i said to him like that's so not true because just because he can't put as much um time in certain projects like the videos and that doesn't mean that he like um he pulled you back can i yeah, that that he holds me. Yeah, exactly. That was like, yeah, <laughs> that he holds me back because, like, with him, not um having decided this to be his priority, um, it leaves me with more freedom to do, to express myself and to do what I want and to claim this more of my project and to expand it into different things, um, and I think it's better that way because like we we have har harmonized this mm -hmm. way perfectly because i think i don't know maybe i mean i mean i love to work with other people but when it comes to like the ideas and what i want to express like then i like to be the ceo you know and if i yeah maybe i would clash with someone who um which priority would it uh it would be as well as mine you know mm -hmm. That makes so sense. the idea, maybe, and yeah, like we do what we want, and I always ask him for everything, um. But in the end, like with the ideas for the video and for um maybe decisions sometimes for live shows or mm -hmm. um many things like yeah, they they start with an idea that I have because I put so much time in that he sometimes can't, so yeah. No, absolutely. That makes sense. Can you imagine doing this all by yourself, though? If you didn't have a partner in this, do you think you'd be able to? <laughs> well, I think it would be the work we put out wouldn't be as good if I did it all by myself. And mm -hmm. I think I may, my would go crazy. <laughs> <laughs> you know, well, because it's no, I'm very grateful that we do this together. Yeah, because it's, absolutely. It's why would anyone why would anybody want to do this by themselves if they if they have the chance to work with people that um 
are like the other half of the puzzle when it comes to your work and and i mm. and i really like to um be like the director of an a project like the creative director or two uh, like i'm the one who i'm very initiative and i yeah, I, I know what I want, but still, I think the most fun thing and the most important thing for me is um, to work with other people mm -hmm. who who see this project that I maybe had the idea to as their own as well. Yeah. Like, it's mm -hmm. so important to me, I think, to work with other people. Maybe if I didn't, if I wouldn't work with him, I would work with, with someone else because I always gravitate towards and working with other people. Mm -hmm. when it comes to these projects what like with dancers or with a videographer or like with people that criticize my ideas because I'm very perfectionist and I'm very aware of that as an artist or as it doesn't matter what you do sometimes you lose your objectivity you know yeah. when yeah. you do yeah. like it's like maybe I think everyone once when they first retouched a photo ever and they were like oh i want to do i want to i want this um pimple to be gone and i want my skin to be a little bit smoother there and blah blah and in the mm -hmm. end it's like flat <laughs> because i hold you a different photo because yeah. you lost your objectivity and then you're like what maybe but only like three days later you notice because you yeah, yeah. So you think that the but partnership you keeps you other grounded? People, yeah, very much. Mm -hmm. And um, if you work with other people, not only with him, but like everyone, they notice immediately. So you save so much time and you avoid so many mistakes as maybe other people already did. Uh -huh. And I, I really like to um, give people that I work with, even if my, if it was my idea, kind of my project and I initiated it, I want them to um, feel free and empowered to um, bring their own ideas and to, like, I want, I want them to be able to put themselves into the project because I'm, yeah, I think it's important that they see themselves in, in the result as well. Like they look at it and they they're like, oh, I was able to I was able to give my like like I don't know, there's an expression in German that doesn't work <laughs> in English. And <laughs> <laughs> what does it translate to? Um <laughs> oh my god, it's I'm gonna say it in German, it's um in Fußabdruck hinterlassen. That's oh my god. That's um your to leave. Oh my, maybe it works to leave your footprint in this project. Yeah, it kind of works. So if you're, yeah, no, that makes sense. I don't think I that, that you use it, right? But but I think no. it <laughs> translates in a way that you understand what I want to say. Yeah, absolutely. <laughs> so like, I want to, I want them to leave their footprints in my project. I don't mm -hmm. I don't want them to perfectly um fulfill my dreams of what I want to see I I want them to see themselves and I want to see them when they work and uh, when they're part of this project um, and I, because I think it's it's nonsense to just let people do the work that like technically pursue the things that they're able to and I just um uh give them instructions because yeah, no, like, there's so art. much more potential with many artists and many brains you know it's mm -hmm. it's so much better when they correct me because I mean they're better in what they're doing than I am mm -hmm. I mean I'm, yeah. I'm quite broad when it comes to art because I I'm interested in so many different things and I do many different things but I'm not like this I'm not a videographer through and through like I know certain things so I can I can talk about them and I can I can do it I can do a shot list so he understands what I want or something like that but I'm not the like the expert yeah I feel like um, it's very important and, to yeah. keep your ego in check 
Because sometimes I feel like it's only so natural that, you know, you feel like you know everything, but really, like you said, it's very important to just talk to the people around you. Yeah. Yeah. I think that's very important. Well, hmm. (laughs) I think it's uh, as an artist or maybe as well as a singer, like uh, the thing with the ego is like people kind of want to see you um being kind of the attention whore in a way <laughs> no that makes sense yeah mystical, you know uh, uh, mm-hmm. maybe that's wrong but I kind of feel um like that sometimes so it's very important to me that people know that it's not the case because for me it's very much not the case I I'd never rob someone of their spotlight I'd be mm-hmm. the first one to push someone to the spot that even if they don't want to maybe like uh, you did so much (laughs) you you worked so hard on this project you have to be seen and (laughs) Uh you know it's very very important to me because I I'd feel very bad and I think that's a very horrible thing to do (laughs) like to rob someone of their work so I think there's just a line between the show because I mean during shows the singer's kind of the frontman of the band yeah. or whatever, right? So they kind of have to have all the attention on themselves. Yeah. But just separating that from real life, I think, is very important. Yeah. And it was very it was a very big step when he wished for that as well. Because I, I'd never asked for him to be more in the background. Never. And I mm-hmm. kind of pushed him in the foreground. And he was like, oh, I kind of noticed that I'm not comfortable with being in all the videos and something like that. And all the things like he has to do in the front. So mm-hmm. he told me he wants that. And sometimes still it's kind of hard for me to like um to tell people that it's my project or so yeah this is this is an Ion Ava album because it's uh-huh. very much not just me, you know. Yeah. But that's with, that's that's the case with every artist. They just conceal it very much. I mean, mm. many singers don't even write their songs. I mean, I mean that's okay if you root for a specific singer, then you root for them, their team, and it's yeah, um, for exactly. Us, us people easier to relate to. Um, one person like who's the head of all of this then to like uh, a light in structure and you no, know yeah, absolutely and many many people so I think that's okay but it's kind of hard to yeah like in every interview we have to work on this how we want to present ourselves or how mm-hmm. I should pre- present myself because we end up explaining kind of explaining this in every interview like what are you? Are you a band? And then we <laughs> kind of have to start to explain everything. Like, hmm, no, we're not a <laughs> band. We're kind of me, but also us. So, <laughs> yeah, <laughs> and we have to, yeah. Like, mm-hmm. just... have you seen Taylor Swift's documentary Reputation? Or no, sorry, Miss Americana. Um. Oh, I I think so. Yeah, yeah, I think so. Because what you were talking about, about how there's an artist and a whole team behind mm-hmm. them, I think, because it's a documentary, right? So during it, she mm-hmm. was presenting her album and it's a whole room full of people. So yeah. it's not just her. And I think people don't mm-hmm. oftentimes realize that. Yeah. And I mean, um, the um, many artists or not the art- artists, maybe the management and everything, they don't really want people to know that as well. No, absolutely. They want, people to root for one person and I think that's kind of okay that's a part of the job Mm -hmm. it's like with actors like they have to do the interviews and they're like the stars of this movie but they mostly they're not even as big of a part of it as it it's presented in the media I mean absolutely they didn't write it most of the time Mm -hmm. I'm almost never and yeah (laughs) (laughs) <laughs> when I think of these projects and, and as um, the more I do these kind of projects and that um, the more I work with more and more people, you know, it's it kind of comes to my attention more when I like see interviews with um, the stars of a movie, actors and everything. It's kind of that's just part of their job yeah. to 
present this movie for people who maybe don't want to be in the spotlight as well. And I think mm -hmm. that's not just to be cursed at. I think that just kind of how it's maybe like how it's um, put into different boxes, you know, this mm -hmm. job is this and this job is this. And this includes this and for actor in, it, include, it includes interviews and everything. Mm -hmm. But many people like only think of this person when they think about like films. But as or, long as they think about the film, I think the yeah. actor's job is done. I mean, that's the goal. Yes, that's mm -hmm. the goal. And that's why it's still the work. Uh, like actors shouldn't be cursed for like stealing attention away from the other people. But mm -hmm. yeah, but uh, I think that's very interesting. And it's very complicated to yeah. deal with, I guess. And mm -hmm. we always talk about this and we always like there's always a situation that we didn't talk about prior, even if we thought we talked about everything. And it was like, OK, that kind of wasn't in this gray zone again where we didn't know how to put it, you know? So. Yeah. And so with you, did you know that you always wanted to be in the spot spotlight even whilst growing up? Hmm. I think for me, this thing with the spotlight wasn't really what wasn't really my priority. Like mm. I wasn't the entertainer. Really? I'm, I mean, I, I always, yeah, I, I wasn't, <laughs> mm -hmm. I really wasn't. I, well, maybe I'm wrong, but no, I, I mean, I always <laughs> sang, I always sang, but I kind of just for so long, I, didn't realize that it was an instrument and it was something that I was maybe very much better than many people mm. at, you know. Because How did you I get into always, singing? I don't know. I just always <laughs> did. I, I had I have videos of me like singing when I was maybe three. Uh, my mother, my, my, my mother always tells me that I, when I was like in kindergarten, like that means that I was like four or five. I used to sit for hours, for hours, to mm -hmm. sit in front of um, the cassette um, thing yeah. and uh -huh. and sing like second and third mm -hmm. um, voices to <laughs> really harmonies. Like the, yeah, yeah harmonies. Second and <laughs> At third. At four harmonies. years old. So, like wow. these children. Yeah, <laughs> I, I apparently I did that. So uh -huh. I just always <laughs> did it, and then in oh there comes the school thing again like the difference what was it maybe no it wasn't middle school it was later on what comes okay. after middle school high school yeah yeah high school let's say uh -huh. in high school um i um when i ah uh, yeah i the first time i sang in front of like people i didn't know like i i was like presenting my voice because at home I just was singing all the time for myself. Okay. You know? uh -huh. But then when I was presenting, if the first time, um, it was like I was 12 or something like that. And it was like we had these weeks where we had a different, where we could choose like uh, a course or something like, uh -huh. let's call it just like a special course. And I chose one with music and we worked with Garish Band. Uh -huh. And um like with other children in my age range like we were all able to choose this and so we recorded feeling good and oh. i have the recording of this like i have the recording of the very first time i ever sang to people i didn't know and then like how people looked at me and like people were surprised like oh that's when it kind of clicked. I was, oh, this is something more. I, I didn't realize that this, that I was maybe good at this. Uh -huh. Like, especially good at this. My, I mean, that I, I always knew that I could sing, but not like this one, because I was very surprised at the reaction sometimes. And then in front of my class, I sang, sang um, shortly after this once and people were like very impressed and I was like oh this is something more than I thought it was mm -hmm. and I started then I 
started to realize that this was an instrument too. And I used to play the violin for 10 years. I wow. can't really play it anymore. <laughs> um, but, but then my voice started to... Um, I, I, like, I stopped playing violin because I sang more. Because, mm -hmm. I mean, it's not very... Yeah, and I started to play the piano more because it was a better company instrument than the violin mm -hmm. to my voice no, because definitely. the voice became my solo instrument in a way. And that's, it was very late where I realized that that was maybe something that I want, like that singing was something that I wanted to pursue further. Because when I was a child, I always wanted to be like, uh, um, uh, like a comic book author or something like that, because uh -huh. I used to draw, draw all the time and 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 um, build things like like I try to accomplish to um how can I say this um I don't know the word <laughs> that's fine. <laughs> <laughs> Well, I I just saw like uh, like maybe I was obsessed with um, building things. Yeah, but also with so with Jungle Book. I was obsessed the with the Jungle Book, and I mm -hmm. loved I loved the vultures. They were yeah. like my oh my god! <laughs> I loved them because they sang and they had long hair, and I kind of always loved everything that flew and that was. <laughs> long and you know I just uh -huh. and I drew them cr like crazy and I paused in between the movies and my sister always tells me it was so annoying because they couldn't watch <laughs> the movie without me like stopping it and like analyzing what the wing was like and so <laughs> I was crazy and then I also uh, did um, try to do them like 3D like um, mm. draw them 3D blue and oh Make them. Well, not, not draw them, but make them. And I wow. don't know what the word is like to DIY my own toys in a way. Okay, I know? get that. Yeah. That I, wow. I wanted to like build them to be able to play with them. And I, yeah, that was my passion. I always thought that I would pursue art, but then music came and became more and more important. And so, mm -hmm. yeah, this ended up being like the now it's the core of it I, I mean i do many many different things still mm -hmm. i mean i i edit the videos i do the concept for them and i did all the artworks and um yeah so i still do art almost equally but the core is music mm -hmm. and I, I i mean singing is very 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 important to me mm -hmm. yeah that makes sense. <laughs> and so you said that you performed for the first time in front of people you didn't know in high school. How did you feel before that? Were you nervous? I think I was I was nervous, but I didn't think of much then. And, and there weren't many people there. I, I, I think okay. it's funny because like uh, the one person that was in front of me listening to me sing the first time now is the boyfriend of my sister and it's kind of a wow. coincidence uh -huh. <laughs> yeah so and I, he played guitar in this he's also on the recording like he played his guitar <laughs> when he, he was like 11 or 10 years old like oh. <laughs> <laughs> so funny so fun <laughs> to listen to that and it's amazing i love that i have the recording of it yeah very special yeah, I, I think so too. Because it's like a really high quality. I even have the Garth Band project. I um lately I just I realized I like I found this project and I was like, oh my god, I have the vocals like on solo. I I could like use wow. them for anything. It's amazing. Yeah. I love it <laughs> when I realized that. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And how do you feel about yeah. performing now? Um I love performing. I really like it. Um, I started to incorporate um, dance more and more. I mean, I never, I'm not a dancer mm. by any means. <laughs> like, I, th I think I can move well, um, but I never had any training. So now I'm like weekly, the, there were holidays, so there wasn't any for yeah. quite a few times. But um, I started to go in 
dance classes weekly and it's very 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 challenging oh my god <laughs> and it puts me out of my comfort zone so much but I, I just I think it's amazing like in live shows and people are able to dance and like and I sing at the same work time with, yeah and that is why well, yeah <laughs> oh my god and like I I work with um a few dancers uh, for videos and also for live shows um it's just like we did small gigs but we mm -hmm. still took like two dancers with us and I think it was like a pocket version of like a big show you know it's like mm -hmm. yeah because we didn't have a budget and it was a small stage but we still did it and I think I'm very proud of that proud of that and I loved like to see them and I wanted to be able to bring it together more that it wasn't as separate that mm -hmm. that I was maybe a part of it too and I wanted to do like small parts of like the um the choreography too and yeah I'm starting to do more and more I guess but yeah I'm never going to be like the dancer but mm -hmm. I want to get better at it and and I think it really um um puts the live live shows on a next level when it when it's like you I'm united with dance and music you know yeah absolutely um, yeah and, and live shows like I don't have stage fright really mm -hmm. but sometimes I experience that I really that I lose my ground like I'm mm -hmm. not grounded anymore before and then I kind of get very nervous and I'm While very much in my head or before uh, yeah sometimes before and also like when I when it's like a concert and it's like a competition I experienced that in a competition recently mm -hmm. um and I was so nervous because I wanted to be perfect I was so perfectionistic that I was scared that something would go wrong or I wasn't in the moment I was very much in my head and I noticed mm -hmm. every single like every single note that was maybe a little bit pitchy I was like mm, you know and I was very tense I was very tense and so mm. and then I was also disappointed afterwards because I didn't like I thought I wasn't able to show what I wanted to show them mm. um in the end we won the competition so it was, was it amazing. the band x <laughs> was it that band one x, yes Ben X, yeah. What's that one? Because it says but in I your was... bio. <laughs> yeah. Oh, yeah. Yeah. Uh, right, right. I, I put it in my bio because someone told me I should do that. Like, yeah, nice. Put everything you have. <laughs> All your credentials. Your profile. <laughs> yeah, really. <laughs> you need to show what you did. So, yeah. It was very, yeah. I was very disappointed with the first show, but I mean, it was. It, it still was good when I. Mm -hmm. look back but still yeah I have a lot of work to do when it comes to this but I'm excited to do it mm -hmm. and yeah live performing um is so like sometimes it's so hard to prepare for it um because you don't know what condition you are going to be in when you're seeing live what is that kind mean? of what what's the like what your mindset is going to be oh, okay yeah and sometimes like I have the feeling that well it's just always hard when the life um the live show is recorded and you can watch it back like in very high quality because then you hear everything <laughs> and like when you're nervous and it's like a competition and you move around and yeah and maybe you didn't hear everything very clearly and, so, and then you hear the recording you're like shit am I that bad <laughs> but I think then it's really important to not get in your head too much and like to just because in the end you just focus on like these details and maybe it wasn't perfect but yeah you start to focus on these details and then you're like oh my god everything was bad and then maybe you listen to it again like a few days later or a week later and you're mm -hmm. like it wasn't all that bad i guess and so i think like all these like with these competitions they were recorded so i always was able to 
listen to them afterwards and yeah it's not always the best thing to be able to do that because yeah yeah kind of maybe puts you in a bad mood after a great concert because like you pick out the bad parts you know mm -hmm. so yeah I think that's something I'm really eager to work on like when it comes to shows because it's so different when you do like a live show with dancers and everything like it's so much things you have to think so much more things you have to think about than um when you just do like an acoustic version of like mean, you maybe sit or stand there and you sing and you're able to concentrate fully on your voice or when mm -hmm. you have to even if you just have to like um walk on this side of the stage at the right time it's still something so to think different. about yeah. yeah and and it's so important to rehearse it many times and that's one thing that i always kind of forget and i rehearse <laughs> yeah like really actively rehearse like yeah we didn't have like time to meet up with like the drummer and the dancers for many times before the show like maybe two times we did oh, wow. it and i mean I know the songs very well because I sang them into the microphone many times and I sang them. I, I mean, I wrote them, the most of them, mm -hmm. um, or a part of them, you know. So, and, and Ben as well. But still, I sometimes don't like actively um, rehearse them because I can sing them and it sounds good when I'm at home. And, but when you're a little bit nervous or you want to show them more and you mm -hmm. um, do risk your choices or something like that, then I realized it's very important and it makes a very big difference when you're prepared and you're very much, when you very much rehearse. I maybe sound stupid, but like I sometimes really just think that I have to be able to do it on like just without rehearsing it like bam I should be able to do this this shouldn't be that hard and then I'm uh -huh. so hard with myself and I'm like what am I doing <laughs> what am I thinking like I didn't even like the big artists they rehearse for so, so yeah. they, they rehearse these shows like for a hundred times I mean like for example Beyonce she's crazy with these choreographies and mm -hmm. everything she has to think about she can't think about these things she has to be here when she does them and she rehearses and she works for them and that's something that I sometimes forget I guess because like I'm able to sing them but I didn't really rehearse them so I can't do them in my sleep but if you really really want to sound good on these recordings you have to be able to do it in your sleep or just be lucky and have a very very good day but like I can't count on that so uh -huh. No, that makes sense. And so on the topic of preparation, do you have a specific vision of yourself in, say, five or ten years? Or do you just take it more with the flow? Well, maybe I... I just kind of seem... Oh, that's a very good question. <laughs> Where do I see my seven days? Well, I try to manifest some things, certain mm -hmm. things. Like I, I think I don't know exactly um, on how I did it, but I think I manifested to do. Uh, I I just want to be able to do like a Hollywood production version of this music video I put out mm -hmm. today. Um, and I, I don't know how much time I gave myself, but I was like between five and 10 years, I said, then I want to be able to do that. Mm -hmm. And, um, uh, some smaller things I manifested, like, like there's in, in Sofingen where I live, like in Switzerland there, um, is like a local open air festival. Yeah. Uh -huh. I can hear it from my balcony at home. Mm -hmm. <laughs> <laughs> um, so it's like maybe with the bike, it's like 20 minutes. Okay, very close. Upwards, so 
Yeah, it's very close. <laughs> uphill. So, <laughs> yeah, um, it's very much uphill. <laughs> you don't want to ride with the bike there, but yeah. <laughs> so I manifested to be able to play on one of the stages there, like in two years. I really okay. want to reach that goal. But I manifested, I, I said like, um, um, how do you say that? Like, the the next of the next festival okay i get that okay the uber next can you say that no <laughs> not in english no. not that like, i know of. Say <laughs> yeah well, in germany say the next and then uber next you know uh -huh. so <laughs> that's useful like, after after the next one i said like mm -hmm. i was on this festival and i was so inspired because i saw these people I saw I saw a band perform. I don't remember exactly which one, but I was like, I want to be on this stage and I want to be able to do a show there. And I said to myself, like, um, after the the year after the next festival, I want to do it. And I wanted to say it like that because, like, two festivals were uh, weren't able to be held because of mm -hmm. Corona. So yeah. it kind of granted me two years more time to do it <laughs> because I didn't <laughs> set a date. So maybe I'm able to reach this manifestation, maybe. So yeah. that's, that's like, exciting. Like Good that you goal. manifested it. I was it. like, yeah, I, I just I just did in this moment. And I, yeah, I think it has something to it to manifest things because like it really, if it doesn't do anything then it still gives you hope you know exactly yeah doesn't it do still any gives harm. you hope and it gives you like a goal and it's so important because sometimes when i'm working on my stuff i feel like i'm just working into nothing because when you like work on this stuff for like one year and nothing ever comes out you just you're, just, you're like you're like a teacher who prepares and their lessons but they never have lessons Mm -hmm. And that's not fun. I mean, even oh. if you like the job, you want uh -huh. to put something out and you want to hear something back from out of the world, you know. So yeah. that's uh, manifesting things kind of, yeah, gives you a goal to work towards too. And I think that's very important. I think so too. Because like you said, because sometimes when you work on something for too long, you kind of get stuck in this rut where that's just yeah. all you see. And you're kind of unable to lift yourself and yeah. see a little bit beyond. But when you manifest, it gives you hope. Yes. Yeah, that's exactly how I feel about that. Mm. And yeah. Okay. <laughs> I'm going to add to this. Uh -huh. I feel like that's a good question to end the podcast with. I really like mm -hmm. talking to you. You're so interesting. <laughs> Thank you very much. Well, I was very flattered that someone recommended me to be in this podcast so if yeah. this person is watching this thank you very much it made <laughs> my whole month because I your th whole month I was, yeah i was so astonished that someone would do that i was like wow <laughs> that's the impact a person can have i mean i i don't know what, what this is gonna get me exactly and i don't really care mm -hmm. i just was so happy that someone would take the time to recommend me to you that mm -hmm. someone would think that i was so um interesting that they yeah. wanted to see me on this and I was so flattered and yeah like this was everything like this means so much and I never thought that it would mean so much like something that this to me you know mm -hmm. and now here we are <laughs> yeah here we are <laughs> and thank you too because mm -hmm. like you then asked me <laughs> and I think it's really cool this podcast what you do mm -hmm. thank you um, my pleasure